you didn't know that this existed with R. Kelly? No, no I don't... trapped in the closet. No, no. Ended up what being the that? most ridiculous story. Like by the end of it, you had little people involved and gangsters and like, yes. It, it's, yeah, um... and he sings the entire thing. He plays every character. Every character. Are you making this up? Are you making no. this up? You guys, are... no, come on. This is not on me and making this a up. Nas made of fact. Welcome back to Not a Strong Start, a podcast by filmmakers who talk movies, television, and analyze R. Kelly's Trapped in the Closet. I'm your host, the Boogie Dan. I am not your host, the myth, the legend, host Dingo. I am Bloody Marie. So many jokes I can make off that, and I won't. This is a this is the children's show. When I said mine out loud, I was like, okay, that, that sounds worse than, than, than what it is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the host dingo. <laughs> it was See, like, oh, okay. it, uh, that's why I heard that. And I was like, all right, the boogie Dan. That just sounds like I'm over here just dancing, though. I'm just a dancing machine. Mm-hmm. So I'm okay with that. Welcome mine. to the host dingo party. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about movies that came from myths or folklore. But first, we're going to hit you with a current event. So supposedly, Warner Brothers, because everyone was pushing for Amber Heard to get fired for Aquaman. Some because of the controversy what happened with Johnny Depp, others because she just wasn't good in it. Uh, so supposedly Warner Bros. was going to fire her and she did not get fired because Elon Musk had his lawyers threaten them into keeping her for it. And then another piece of news coming from the same set is supposedly, according to Amber Heard's therapy notes, which how they got that and how that's legal to reveal that. That's an other story. Jason Momoa at one point dressed up as Johnny Depp and tried to get her fired while drunk. I don't see how anyone could mistake how, how anyone could mistake Jason Momoa dressed up as Johnny Depp at all ever. Like anyone would even mistake that. So that's gotta be false. (laughs) That's to be false. Right. I think. I feel John uh, Jason Momoa just dresses like that. Like <laughs> I, I don't think he was dressing like Johnny Depp. Like he even wears right. the rings and everything. So like unless he's walking in dressing like uh you know Jack Sparrow, how do you know he's dressing up like Johnny? He's coming in with scissor hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, supposedly she saw him as dressed as Johnny Depp. He was probably just dressed on himself. And okay said he was drunk trying to get her fired oh, okay so i thought he was trying i thought she thought that he was trying to like masquerade as johnny depp like be like pretend he was johnny depp no i think he was doing it, it to antagonize her i think he was doing it to antagonize her oh i don't think now, he'd do that that's what she's saying now this also came around the time that it came out that elon musk wrote that scathing letter or whatever it was right that to keep her there mm. so maybe this is a way to combat that right because i mean it didn't come from her camp that elon musk saved her job on the set i'm sure it came from the studio or somebody else but who's leaking this stuff because you know warner brothers clearly doesn't want this stuff coming out right now because their movie hasn't even come out yet i mean it's got to be coming from from her end whether it it not doesn't have to be specifically her but from her camp or someone related to her camp has to be because it's all towards propping her up and going against the movie itself and the production. Um, right. I mean, for whatever reason, she wasn't good in the first one. Forget all the controversy or anything like that. Her acting is, eh, you know, <laughs> and honestly, in that first movie, there was no chemistry between her and Jason uh, at all. So the fact that they reduced the role and almost, I guess, we'll find out how much they eliminated it from it. It makes sense creatively, especially I think the, the director came out and said the first story involved her and it was about them and their interaction and all of that. The second story is supposed to be about him and um, I forget what his name is. Um, the guy from The Conjuring? Yeah. It's supposed to be their story and the them coming together. And that's why, like, no matter what controversy or not, that's why her role was reduced because her character is not a major player in this storyline that they're running. 
it just still seems right. weird that they're kind of adding it, you know, for some reason. And like, and I guess the first part is Elon Musk write, uh, writing the scathing letter that he was going to come down on them, you know, like hellfire and all that. Would I mean, would Warner Brothers really succumb to that? Like, were they really scared of that? Like, no, right? They're Warner Brothers. Like, what yeah. power does he have over them? Nothing. Right. Well, did ridiculous. this actually happen? Like, did all this actually happen? Did he actually write a letter? Is, that, is it well, true? Is it We shown? don't have proof, right? That's just what the rumors are coming right. out right now. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just okay. it's weird. Okay. So, did it happen? Yes, okay. I want to, for the sake of this podcast and our current event. That's exactly what happened, Marie. Yes, it did. <laughs> the reason why? That's what we're trying to decipher right now. We're trying to decipher what's the myth and what's the legend that came from this. Is it a folklore or is it absolute truth? We have our people on it. Our investigators will go and find this letter. Yeah. Jo George is on it right now as we speak. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, that's where George is right now. Mm -hmm. That's where he's been gone. He's, he's yeah. you know, hot off the press. He's wearing like the hat and everything. He's on set with the trench coat trying to figure it out for us. Dressed up as Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, there you go. Uh, speaking of rumors, folklore, myth, and all that, which this episode is going to revolve around. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the movies themselves, all kids, when you're growing up, you hear these little like myths or folklore that your parents tell you, whether it's to scare you into not doing something or scare you into doing something or not going somewhere. There's always these little, little folklore, urban legends and stuff that you hear from like your family. Sometimes it might be a, a sibling or a cousin who's just trying to scare you and creep you out. Uh, you guys have one from, from you growing up? Let's start with you, Dan. Um, outside of like God's always watching and I have to be fearful of, of committing sins and going to hell for all eternity. I mean, the you know, I mentioned this before. It's like I grew up very desensitized by horror. I watched it a lot. So I didn't really I wasn't really scared of of these stories that much. I think La Llorona was maybe the closest thing just because it's like Mexican lore. But there, I can't say definitively there was really anything that I believed in wholeheartedly. I was never afraid to walk in the dark. I, I can always easily walk in the dark. I can do that now. Um, I didn't really get scared by things like that, to be honest with you. So I didn't really believe in it. I guess Bloody Mary was like the one that I would try. I remember trying because I remember my older cousin would like lie and say he saw stuff. So we would try it. But I never actually believed it all the way. Did it work? It did. <laughs> yes that's why yeah. i'm are here you, are, are you the original oh, dan? <laughs> no i'm not I, i've been trapped in the closet <laughs> that <laughs> Call back. Call back. boogieing in there <laughs> yeah. what, what are what about you marie what's a what's a, a myth or an urban legend that you grew up with Oh, my, well, obviously mine was bloody Mary in elementary school. That was a huge thing that us girls would do. And, uh, there was no folklore thing that my family introduced us to. Like Dan said, it was all about God and, <laughs> you know, going to hell. That was, that was the, uh, the legend in my family, but in school, the ultimate it was, folklore. Um, the ultimate, yeah. yeah <laughs> um, the Lord of folklore. So it was just bloody Mary in school. Girls would try it in the bathroom. I think I did it maybe once. I was I was really scared of stuff. Like I was like, well, maybe it's gonna happen. I mean, if if there's demons in hell, maybe there's bloody Mary gonna come through the the mirror. Who knows? So I think I probably did it a couple times. Um, yeah, that that is how I got here. Marie, did you use the, the Canadian the version to call her, or did you use the American version? to call her yeah see in in so it's called bloody mary in um america and in canada we call it just caesar so it's like instead of a bloody mary mix it's the caesar mix because in canada we don't have bloody marys we our drinks are called caesars and we just say caesar 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 13 times wait wait, no, wait like, does, blood, does she come out or does caesar come out <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. caesar and just part no, we... two Marie. <laughs> I, I remember hearing about the Bloody Mary. I never tried it. I did try Candyman. Uh, but I mean, that's not a real folklore, but it's kind of loosely based on, on Bloody Mary. Yeah. But I, I remember I tried that one. I was like, okay, that requires me to say it less times, and I'm lazy. So let's go with Candyman. I only have to say it three times. <laughs> <laughs> I did buy the Pandora's box from. Uh... 
pin, you know, from uh, Hellraiser, hoping yeah. it would lead to Pinhead. I solved it. No, it didn't. <laughs> I didn't meet him. So we live like the dangerous. We, yeah. we live the dangerous. Because I remember I I had a, a my buddy doll for for a little bit. They they got it for Did me. You? And like, oh, I was suspicious of that thing. I think they got it for me on purpose. <laughs> Because I was such a horror fan, they got it for me. Yeah. Like, okay, let's get them. Let's let's creep them out. And they put it right on the dresser. I remember looking oh, yeah. at it at night. <laughs> <laughs> when I was twelve, moving? when I was twelve, I had the Ouija board. I did that when I was young. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I make we make our own Ouija boards. Yeah, I I try to get my sister possessed. Didn't work. Or she was already possessed and it didn't <laughs> unpossess her. Like, there's no <laughs> room in there. Work. Yeah, there's no more. <laughs> there you go. Take that, sister. I think one besides like those regular ones that I remember, um, this when I was in elementary school that it came out, and I kind of believed it for a little bit was the the chupacabra. Mm. And I mm. I remember when that came out, um, and it st- it originated in Puerto Rico. That was like the first sightings, mm. and it blew up like all over the island you even see in like news reports over here i think like one of the mayors from one of the the places over there in puerto rico he went on an expedition to find it like mm-hmm. that's how big like it was and people were really believing that there was this creature that killed like tons of animals and has sucked up all their blood uh and then it became like so popular that it started spreading. Then you started, uh, people started having sightings in other Latin American countries. Like the Chupacara like picked up and just like took a boat like somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> he was a world like, traveler. Every, yeah, everyone had the Chupacabra uh, <laughs> until it like sorely <laughs> faded away. Uh, but I, I think that was, that was probably the biggest one uh, growing up that I was like, holy crap, I wonder if there really is this little like creature going around is this thing an alien is it like a a mutation like what is this thing oh yeah yeah i remember hearing about it and i think it was just like a goat sucker right just like the blood of goats or something i think not just goats all that chickens roosters like any any small animal Hmm. a goat sucker sounds horrifying yeah he's just a a goat sucker just just sucking the greatest of all time (laughs) So when we were young, do we not kind of believe in the Loch Ness monster a little bit, or believe that it somewhat existed and Bigfoot, right? Like, yeah, you know, you saw the picture and it was like that existed, right? I mean, m- maybe not anymore, but I thought at some point it did. I mean, I'm not hundred percent against Bigfoot. <laughs> me, me neither. I'm, I'm like it could be out there. Sure, I'm not against Bigfoot. I still kind of believe a little bit. <laughs> there you go. I want but- to believe. Yeah, there's those things where it's just like it was fun to believe those things. So there yeah. was like really nothing deterring it. You weren't thinking that like the Loch Ness monster or Bigfoot's gonna come knock on your door and like you know tear off your limbs or anything like that. Those are just like <laughs> oh, Fantasies. it's fun to believe that this giant <laughs> thing is just hiding. <laughs> just one day it's like, man, I don't want to go to school. You open up the window, and there's Bigfoot. He rips off your arms. Yeah! <laughs> just, they're just squirting blood out of your body. This is the Did best I day of my home? life. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I got to stay home, Mom. This is what we experience. These are the other ones and you know, Marie being from, from Canada. Uh, you know, Dan and I are both Hispanic, but two different Hispanic cultures. So things, you know, that we grew up with, those myths, those urban legends, sometimes they're variations of the same thing. Sometimes they're completely different things. So in Hollywood, we have these movies that can take those folklores and those myths um, and those urban legends from different cultures and create a story from it. So they're not based on true stories, but they are based off a true folklore uh, that's out there. And sometimes you don't even know. Some, sometimes it's obvious, but sometimes you don't even know. Um, and that's what we're going to be covering in this episode. We're going to talk about some of these movies and what was the original folklore, myth, urban legend that it that it was based off of. So um, I'll start it off on this one. With the first one, I have just because uh, Dan already mentioned it, and I had it as one of my movies, but we had La Llorona. Uh, and this was... This was uh, it wasn't part of the Conjuring spinoff. Like it's, no. it was 
No, but the guy who directed La Llorona came from that world, from the Conjuring mm. world. Yeah. They consider it yeah. part of the Conjuring universe. They do consider do they? it. Do, in that did James realm. Wan yeah. produce it? I think so. I think I, so. I think so. I think so. Okay. Yeah, and because I remember also like the director, one of the knocks of that movie is that mm. um, his style seemed to just be imitating James Wan. So it sounded like mm. you were getting the Wish version of James Wan <laughs> yeah. when you saw that movie, where it was just like, okay, you're using James Wan tactics. Uh, and I remember that was one of the major complaints of the movie. Um, wasn't very good at all. Uh, like many of the spinoffs that come from the Conjuring universe. Uh, but La Llorona, for those that don't know, many people do know, uh, basically it was a mother who lost her, her children. And then at night she can be heard like crying and begging for her kids. Uh, now, La Llorona is, I know Dan mentioned that it originated in Mexico, but mm -hmm. then like Puerto Rico had their Llorona. Too. And that's the mm. one that I remember hearing first was Joe mm. Puerto Rico. Uh, and there was a specific location. There was a bridge over there in Puerto Rico that that's where she would appear. And drivers would see her and you you couldn't just drive and ignore her because she would appear in your car as you're oh, driving God. by. If you wouldn't like acknowledge her, all of a sudden she's there, you look away, you look back, she's in your back seat. Um, mm. And then in that bridge, there was a lot of car accidents that would occur in that bridge. Uh, so people blamed it on La Llorona because of the, the scare and the, the rush and the shock of seeing that and having to appear in the car would cause people to lose control and get into accidents. Uh, so that's that's where, at least in Puerto Rico, La Llorona originated from. Um, yeah, for us, again, it was next. There, yeah, for us, it was next to like a river. And the story would be that this was always like a story to tell kids to not stay out late at night because what she would do is she would lead them to the river and she would end up drowning them. So that way, as a parent, you'd always go and find your children staring at you from underneath the bottom of the river. And she tried to drown them. And the idea was that in order for her to go into heaven, she had to uh, produce the children that she killed and murdered, but she couldn't. So she murders children trying to pass the bones off as her own. And that's the way that she can get to heaven. Mm. That's the Mexican side of it now. You know, dark, though. That's why when I heard the movie, I was like, yes. And then when I watched the movie, I was like, no. The movie is uh, based off of your version of La Llorona. Mm. I think it's based off mm. of the uh, the Mexican version, not the Puerto Rican. Or I'm sure other uh, countries mm. also had their own version uh, it's a traveling show for La Llorona. <laughs> <laughs> She's a busy that's woman, a, man. It's a shame it wasn't a better movie because that's like a really good, that's a it creepy is. story and premise and like it could have been really good. And then like the guy who played Tuco came in and he was not good in that movie. I was just like, it was, it was kind of like a comedy at that point. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's creepy, creepy stories though. Oh, yeah. And the CGI in it was like, I remember yeah, no. when they revealed her, I laughed in the theater. I saw it in the theater. Yeah. I was like, what yeah. the hell is that? I'm yeah. like, that's supposed to be scary. Like, it just looked like so bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's there because La Llorona, I mean, even in the name, it's it's Hispanic. So it's mm. like Hispanic mm. folklore, even though it's different. Era. Is there a version of that um, in Canada? No. Okay. No, there's nothing like that. I'm trying to think if there's even any any actual. I know that my province has like some sort of creature, sea creature. Oh, I can't remember the name. Something, something. Ogo, Ogo. I don't know. There's like some sort of like like not not sea creature, but like a lake creature apparently here in my province. But um, I don't think there's anything really specific to Canada. No. Okay, your kids are, dull. Are, safe. are boring. <laughs> yeah, that's why you guys Canada's are so nice. Kids are safe. <laughs> Yeah, you guys weren't traumatized as children the way that we were. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah, we, we would hear like, you better finish the vegetables or La Llorona is going to get you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's not true. <laughs> What's a movie that you have that's based off of folklore? 
I didn't know that the movie Black Christmas was inspired by an urban legend, but then once reading about it, I'm like, oh, they just altered it a little bit because I I love the movie. Yeah, I love the movie Black Christmas. I watched it for the first time kind of recently within this past year, and I was like, which one? There's like three. But no, just the OG one. I'm not going to touch the remakes that they can, no. Uh, those are gifts I'm not going to open. So, um, the Black Christmas was inspired by an urban legend um, of the babysitter and the man upstairs. So that's what I guess like when not when a when a stranger calls is that one too? Yes. Where they, they're yes. like, yeah. So the urban legend is from like the 1960s. I have to read it out here about a teenage girl babysitting children who receives phone calls from a stalker who continually asks her to check on the children. So. Um, eventually the baby the babysitter calls the police and this is apparently like a true story ish urban legend they had a name of like the girl it's apparently about but i don't know um but the guy was like upstairs like the whole time apparently so black christmas is like that and except they just changed it a little bit to be um like in a sorority house but i didn't know also like i think it's so cool first of all black christmas is a canadian movie it's a canadian slasher there you go. Maybe there you go. Maybe that's our urban legend. I just lied to you and said we didn't have one, and we do because <laughs> apparently the apparently the original story I think was from Montreal or something. So See, this is why I, I don't babysit. Yeah, don't. <laughs> that is the only don't reason. Do why it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so that yeah. one that that was the one that um, I thought, but uh, it's in it's directed by the same guy who does a Christmas story, and I just love that. What a shift. I know, but but if you watch it, you can really see it and sense it. What if they take place in the same universe and the, it was actually the same neighborhood? <laughs> what if it's what if it's Ralphie up there? What if it's actually Ralphie up in the Yeah. Ra- Ralphie has changed. Yeah, that pink funny yeah. suit, you know, it just traumatized me never that. He shot his eye out and that was it. He was full filled with rage. But I do remember yeah. as a kid hearing the the story of the babysitter and the police call back they're like it's coming from inside the house upstairs yeah like i do yeah. i do remember that story uh and then you know now that you bring it up remembering black christmas like okay i can see how it's an adaptation mm-hmm. of that um that's a good story i didn't know that that even that urban legend i didn't know it was based off of an actual event so that's that's creepy so, and yeah. good to know yeah, good to know or freaky to know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I picked one that I thought was really cool, and it was uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. So the character of Dracula, which is based off of Vlad the Impaler. So that was always a cool myth behind it. So you have this guy that was just ruthless, this ruthless, uh, aggressive fighter, essentially in war, became a ruler. But it was always um, the rumors was that he was would drink the blood of his enemies where the idea of the vampire came into place. So even when you watch Francis Ford Coppola's movie that you see the origin of Vlad the Impaler and you see how the idea of Dracula came from that. So to know that this is a real life person that existed and then you see how the myth, the myth came from that to becoming Dracula. It was always fascinating to me because when you base something off of actual truth or to some extent truth, it's always like, man, how realistic is this thing? And then you see how big uh, vampires, the lore became. It was just fascinating, man. I loved it. And I thought Bram Stoker's Dracula, if you guys haven't seen that's one of the best in my, in my opinion, is one of the best iterations of a vampire that we've seen. It's like one of those stories where it's just like over time, people keep adding and as they're telling the story mm-hmm. they want to they want to top the previous story so they add one yeah. little detail then the person's like i'll top you add some little, little detail <laughs> yeah. next thing you know we got glittering vampires playing baseball <laughs> i was just gonna no. say and then they peaked with twilight <laughs> there's no, no coming back vampires that again one. we've yeah. never seen if if you're being like vlad the impaler didn't he have like like um 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 not like spear spikes things you know yeah. yeah yeah yes so what if you were like that and had a chair like that so it was like t- like spikes with skulls so you have both it's kind of like something cool. pokey and bones and bones that i i like spikes. that because it's just matching the decor so that way when you walk in it's like oh he's matching like this looks like you bought it at ikea 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Cohesive it. Like, those, design. Those yeah. Yeah. Those, those, those are some nice goals. Yeah. Those are my enemies. <laughs> yeah. You know, I do have now, an about spot, that discount. Saying. For my next one I got is since we are approaching Christmas, I thought I'll go with like a Christmas related one. Mm-hmm. Not the movie Krampus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Krampus uh, is based yeah. off of, it's like a Central European legend, supposedly originated from Germany. Uh, and the name comes from a word mean that means uh, claw, pretty much. Uh, so Krampus, first of all, you haven't seen that movie, great horror comedy for Christmas time. I watch it like every year on there. Mm-hmm. But then this, this creature is like half goat, half like demon monster. Oh, uh, really creepy! And he, I, guess, I think he was the son of the no- of the Norse god of the underworld. And mm. according to their legend, you know, Krampus and Saint Nicholas, they would arrive on the same evening. Uh, with Saint Nicholas, you know, rewarding the kids that were good, and then Krampus beating with branches and sticks, eating or dragging the back children to hell. You know, kind of just I'm guessing the level of bad you were, the kind of like, okay, you've been like 20% bad, you get the stick. You know, you've been above 80% bad, you're going to hell for the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they would do that. And then the next morning, kids would either wake up with their gifts from San Nicholas or recovering from their experience with Krampus and then reevaluate their life choices for the next year. Uh, so that's basically <laughs> what it is. Well, it's kind of what, it was like the Christmas version of Good Cop, Bad Cop. Yeah, I think. <laughs> so I thought that was a that was a cool one. And you know, we know Saint Nicholas, Saint Santa blew up, and you know, everyone knows it. All the kids look, you know, look forward to it. But I feel over the last maybe like 10, 15 years, Krampus has been kind of making some moves. Getting out there a little bit, you know, trying try to get his time to shine. Um, yeah, I remember uh, seeing it on the show The Office. <laughs> you guys were still with yeah. Dwight, where he dressed up as Krampus, and he would go. Who who was it that he stole? Remember, he went in there and he threw a bag over somebody who was trying to steal him. Anyways, it was a very funny story, and to see it be turned into a, it kind of has like a funny um, backstory to it. So to see the horror version of it and to see that they added the comedicness to it went so well. And I love Adam Scott. I thought he was great in it. You know, they had a really good cast for it as well. Um, you know, it overall, I really liked the movie. I watch it at least. I probably do watch it every at least every Christmas, if not every other Christmas. But it's good, man. They definitely need more co- uh, horror Christmas movies, as we always mention. They need more of them. If they're splitting the kids, pretty much good and bad what if like a kid was a like, half good half bad <laughs> like he did some really good things but then he also messed some things up like how do they decide do they like flip a coin to be like see whose kid that is you know because that's a that coin flip deciding whether you get a gift or a beating is like that's a huge difference Just split them in half yeah. right down yeah. right down the waistline <laughs> <laughs> one half in hell and the other half just i'm only gonna eat your legs them. but you can hold your gift with your hands if there oh. was a horror movie like a true horror movie that i would classify that seems very canadian-ish krampus <laughs> that horror movie seems kind of canadian-ish doesn't it a little bit where it's like there's Explain. evil there's threat but there's comedy to it but there's like a, a happy joyfulness which is very canadian-ish but it's still very much a good horror movie. So that way, it's like we're not giving you like a bad horror movie. <laughs> like we're giving you a good is one. That, is that is that Canada to you in a nutshell? Like it's kind of yeah. kind of scary and horror, but it has a light happy. No, no, That's you're the it? scary and horror. The rest of Canada is not. They're all mm. nice and happy go lucky people. Yeah, that's true. And it makes sense now. In order to avoid Krampus, that's why so many apologize all the time. They're like, no, sorry, don't mark this oh, on my bad dad. Yes, yeah, see? Don't, don't expose our, our Canadian secrets, eh? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I have to I have to talk about it. But the, uh, the Mothman, the Mothman prophecies. I talk about the Mothman. Because 
I know that movie, a lot of people really don't like it. But Jose, is it you and me who one time, like we talked about the chapstick and how scary that scene is? Was that you? No, no that wasn't no. you? Who the hell was that? Anyway, the other Hispanic. I like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the only two I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, George. <laughs> oh, yeah, three. Sorry, George. Oh, I he was... oh, he's... <laughs> he's out investigating. You're just keeping it. He's out know... investigating. Yeah. Uh, I forgot about. Sorry, George. I, I didn't want to give away his. <laughs> okay, but so the Mothman um, is West Virginia folklore. And it, it's a humanoid creature reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area from November 15th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. And this creature apparently was spotted near the silver bridge there and um it, col- it ended up collapsing and a bunch of people died so people view the mothman as either like an omen of like death or something bad or some people view the mothman as something good like a warning so people think that if you see the mothman it could be like oh something bad's gonna happen like just be careful it's a warning or they're like oh god it's an omen so you know it's a cup half full or half empty way you want to look at it but the mothman prophecies i kind of like that movie because they don't show the mothman ever in it it's more of like a psychological thriller type creepy movie and um the chapstick scene if anybody's watching or listening and that chapstick scene with richard gear that's freaky that, that scared me i remember that thing the trailer and it was really scary just watch the movie for that one scene i actually have not I like that one it. Um, speaking of random little myths of, you know, talking about Richard Gere, do you guys remember that random rumor oh my God. when we were kids? And it's like, that can't be true. But yet nobody knows 100 percent if it was or it wasn't. Can't be a Lemmy Winks, Lemmy Winks uh, episode of um, of uh, South Park. You ever see that episode with Lemmy mm-hmm. Winks, the uh, yeah. gerbil? Oh, like the, the, oh, South Park yeah, the gerbil. Remember that? <laughs> remember that? I remember the gerbil. I, I think I can I can make um I can it's, put those clues together. Like, there's there's random ones is. like there was that one that was uh Marilyn Manson with the ribs, Manson. like yeah. these can't oh, be real, yeah. but yet this was before social media, people. So think about how good this rumor mill and us playing telephone, like how powerful these rumors were that everybody took it as like this was facts. We all believed it. Is like, these- Kids these days don't know how hard we worked. Mm. We worked hard to the bone, bloody, just to get these out. Like, get these, like, okay, everyone tell someone that Marilyn Manson took out his ribs so that he can do his thing. And then we had mm. to tra- we had to make that travel across countries. People don't realize how hard it was back then. It was we used to have to walk uphill both ways <laughs> in the snow to make things go viral. I have to check out the Mothman Prophecy. I think it's... It's cool when it's like it's not clear cut. Like you said, some people view it as a bad omen, like and others don't. So I like when it's not clear cut like that because it's up to interpretation. Mm-hmm. I mean, personally, I would view it for you know danger against my sweaters if, once I heard like the Mothman <laughs> uh, prophecies. But but I think that's that's cool. And I wonder in the movie did it take place there also in West yeah. Virginia? Yeah, Richard Gere has to go there for a reason. I mean, it's rated really poorly. A lot of people really don't like that movie, but for some reason it has a special place in my heart, I think. This one that I have, the whole myth behind mummies. Again, I like getting real life situations that happen. So, you know, they would always mummify the people in Egypt and they had this belief that in the afterlife, you know, they'd have their possessions with them. But then they came the the mythology and the idea of mummies waking up and trying to kill us and everything. But it was so fascinating to see that the Egyptians were always ahead of their time when it comes to technology. And there's always a strong belief, which I believe that they had communicated somewhat with aliens, right? Or whether you believe that it was actual like alien species or humans that came from space. And there's a whole, you know, theory you can go on about that. But regardless, it seemed like they were already already made aware of a lot of uh, technology or given a lot of technology. Like they developed mirrors well before anybody else was able to do that. So the idea of them mummifying people and putting them in these, uh, you know, coffins, essentially, and then burying them. If they were so technologically advanced, there has to be some idea of truth behind 
mummifying, right? The mummification process, you would imagine. Then you've heard stories of how some people have like unearthed them and people were like literally cursed and they all died within a year of opening up. There's got to be something behind this, right? <laughs> so that's what adds real life horror. That stuff fascinates mm -hmm. me. I was wondering, so it was like, is it these mummies coming back and just like hunting and taking everyone out? Or did they sabotage these corpse, uh, corpses that they mummified maybe with some kind of like poison or something? Yeah. So it's more like exposure. Okay. Mm, yeah. So when you open it up and things like that, they're infected with something and that mm. kind of takes them out over time. Yeah, Could like be. maybe grave robbing was like a huge thing. And then people would like bury people with all their stuff. And then they knew that they were going to open up the uh, sarcophagus and try to like steal from the dead. But then so they, yeah, they booby trapped them. With yeah, because you know, we've that. heard about the the entrances, the journey inside being booby trapped. Why not booby trap the bodies themselves? Maybe they are the aliens and they're all going to just, they're sleeper cells. And they're all just going to come arise one day and it's going to be and body maybe, snatchers. <laughs> it's just cells, yeah, vessels. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're waiting for the right moment. Cool. That's, that was the old, yeah. the old school uh, trio. <laughs> yes, it was. Okay. Now, now let me ask you this guy. What local, I know Marie said you didn't really have anything local, like, you know, urban legends. D did. did you? Okay, so what yeah, did you? That's province, my question: but... is what did you guys have that were local based ones? We'll share a little bit of those stories. Where I lived, we there was like this little section where there was these three that were around each other on the same street, and then it was next door to this place called Black Diamond Mine. So Black Diamond Mine was a real coal mine, and that's where you know uh, one time it caved in and it killed a bunch of people. So they have a graveyard that's there with headstones and people are buried there. And it's considered one of the more, most haunted places in the United States. They see a lot of mm -hmm. stuff. There's a woman in a dress that comes out during certain times. People can actually see her. Like crazy stuff. Yes, I did the Ouija board there, Marie, to answer your question. Yeah. Yes, I did. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I swear. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm crazy with this stuff. So then, but then when you go down the street, that's not too far from there. They had this place called Gravity Hill. And the, the, the local urban, you know, thing was that there was a school bus that the kids died on. But if you put your car in neutral and you put baby powder in the back of your car, your car goes uphill and it was called gravity hill. Mm. And if you put your car in neutral, it literally does go up. And I, you know, the rumors of course, is that you see handprints you know, in the back of your. Okay. I was saying, what is the baby powder for? Yeah. That's it was supposed weird. to be that. Cause you could see there that, and it's also good for chafing. <laughs> no, but <laughs> So then when you drive down that street, they had this place called uh, uh devil's gate or Hell's Gate, I think that's what it's called, Hell's Gate. And it was like this wooden gate, and it was like this lone road that went into this place called Mount Diablo. Mount Diablo was like another haunted mountain where you go over there, and we, even me and my family went there. One time we saw a freshly severed head of a horse, like somebody just severed a, a horse, and we had seen it, but like there was nobody around, and it was like perfectly severed, and the body was gone. It was like, what the hell? Like it wasn't rotting. It was, you know. Anyway, so the street led to that. But the weird thing is that you'd be, you know, on this cross section. And as soon as you cross the wooden gate, all of a sudden the sound, it sounded weird. The wind would stop blowing like it felt very weird. Your cell phone, you didn't have any reception. Lights would start flickering. It was really weird. So every time you cross it, you're supposed to keep walking straight and towards the mountain. And like weird stuff would happen. Then right across the street, they had this place called the Slaughterhouse. And the Slaughterhouse was this place where they literally slaughtered animals. And when you go there at night, there's still dried blood that's there. So when you go up there and they had like this long thing, which I again, I did, you climb up to the very top where you can see everything. But every time you crawl up there, you get this wit, weird wind breeze and blowing and stuff. And you go up there and it just feels really weird. And if you ever go to places that feel haunted, you know, you get like the little creeps and stuff. You feel that the entire time you're there, you hear weird. It almost sounds like animal noises and things that are there. And the the rumor or the, you know, the urban legend is that, you know, somebody went crazy and ended up murdering people that were there. But even when you drive down that street, you see dry blood on the street, it's just smeared of stuff. So that's <laughs> you go down there and they're all right there and they're near Mount Diablo. Crazy. So they they need to just like erase that place from existence. <laughs> yes, like, like yes, and that's not too far from my uh, 
Black Diamond Mines. I'm telling you, it's nuts. We all need to take a trip up there. Go do some Ouija board. <laughs> I was going to so say, down. don't get rid of it. I want to go. I want to go there. Oh, yeah. That sounds we'll do awesome. that. Yeah. Well, if we're talking about like haunting, because I was thinking more like creatures yeah. and things like oh, that. No, no, no. Just, but yeah. like haunting thing, they, where I went actually to, to school for my undergrad uh, in Western Massachusetts, you, we have this uh, this place called the Hoosick Tunnel. Mm. Uh, and there's this long tunnel. I forget how many miles it is. But it's this long tunnel uh, for a train. I think there's still an active train that goes through it. I almost got hit by it once. Mm. But uh, supposedly during the building of, of this uh, this tunnel, hundreds of people died for different reasons. Uh, collapses, uh, drownings, and things like that. Uh, a lot of things happened and hundreds of people died during the building of this tunnel. Uh, so, you know, the legend is that the, the place is still haunted. You'll hear train sounds when there isn't a train coming. You'll see people, uh, things with the lights and all that stuff. So, I mean, of course, we the school is within walking distance of it. So it's a thing to, like, go there for those who want to. So I did walk the tunnels a couple of times. Saw some weird stuff a few of the times. Almost got hit by a train another time. Uh, but that was like one of the spots uh, that I, I do remember growing up when I was in college. And it still shows up um, in like articles and stuff as like one of the haunted places of Massachusetts. Mm. And it's weird because also in that same town, we had this other spot where they were going to film a ghost show. It was one of those places where they want to come in, they want to investigate, and they were looking for volunteers to spend the night in this house. And they were going to record everything to see if there's any activity, any reaction. Uh, and I guess what happens, the story in that house, and this is back where, like, the vehicles had, like, those wooden wheels, like those old cars. That's how old that hap uh, go happened. And I guess this, uh, this chauffeur or, or, like, house chauffeur, was driving this family, um, you know, into town or things like that, and got in a car crash. Like the thing flipped over, one of the wheels broke, whatever happened, and the the mother and the child and they like died. And Ooh. the yeah, and then the husband, if I recall correctly, the husband ended up uh, dying from grief not too long after that. And then I think the driver with guilt for what happened ended up hanging himself uh, in the, it's not the driveway. It's not really a garage. It's like one of those little overpass next to the house. So supposedly that house is extremely haunted and that we're even going to record a show there. I tried to sign up, but they were like full and I didn't get to like be oh. in it or, or do it. But that's all in the same town was the, the tunnel. In my province, we have... Um... Uh, something called the Manipogo. That's what I was. I was kind of right. It's a lake monster said to live in Lake Manitoba. Um, and the creature was dubbed Manipogo in 1960. And oh, there's also a lake in Winnipegosis. And there's a monster called Winnipogo. I just learned. So we have a Winnipogo and a Manipogo. Apparently some sea, some not sea, lake, lake creatures. But um, yeah, I don't really think that. But that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds cute, see? Right, again, Manny it Pogo. sounds like Krampus. That's yeah. why he said, Who's a little one of Pogo? Who's a little one of Pogo? Who's a little Winnie Pogo? Oh, yeah. I wonder, um, if, I wonder if Canadians so, invented pogo sticks. You guys use pogo, that word pogo, far more than Americans do. I have absolutely no idea why this and any of this pogo stuff is is a thing. But and then there's well, then there's also the the hotel here, the Fort Gary Hotel, where I stayed several times. That's haunted. I will just go on record and say, yes, I believe it's haunted. One room in particular, 202, where a woman hung herself in the closet. I would totally and, stay yeah. there. I would totally stay oh, I have. And. I mean, the last time I stayed there, nothing happened. And I stayed there all by myself. I was really brave. Um, but I, the three times I stayed there beforehand with people, with friends, if something happened every single time, every time. It just doesn't like large groups. It, yeah. I even, I was so convinced that even when I stayed there by myself, I was like laying on the bed. I'm like, okay, just please do something. I'm like, just, I was like talking to the ghost. I'm like, it's just us girls. Like, come on, let's. 
<laughs> Spilled the tea. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like I sat in the closet in the dark with like a infrared camera and everything. And I was like talking to her. I was doing like Instagram lives at the same time. Like it was it, nothing happened. Maybe she's like the technology. But the other times I stayed there, I definitely heard um, some sort of scratching, shuffling, something coming from the closet every single time. Um, one time we stayed there and we pushed all the hangers to one side because we're like, we know we heard some noises in the closet. So we're like, push the hangers. And then in the middle of the night, I heard the sound again. We opened the closet and the hangers were moved. Um, I had the TV turn off and then back on by itself. And yeah, it was, it, it, I think it's haunted. It's creepy. It has a creepy air to it. I, I had a, uh, another one actually, Marie, that it's actually linked to Canada. Mm. And it was like, have you seen the movie Antlers? Yes, I have actually. The w Wendigo. Yeah, mm. it's the Wendigo. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this this legend of the Wendigo, it like predates even the Europeans arriving in North America. Um, and it was, uh, it was a legend from the, the natives. Uh, so there's like, two versions of it uh that at least that i'm familiar with it and the, the movie like blended kind of both like into one uh the first mm -hmm. one is you know you've got this large like 15 foot like uh creature who gets larger like the more he eats or or it eats <laughs> uh fast strong um with like heightened senses so it can like stalk people and like chase them down uh it's supposedly like it lives in colder environments like, you know, northern USA and like the Canadian lakes was an, another spot that was popular. Um, has giant antlers, which is why the movie was called like antlers. Uh, very, very creepy looking. Uh, yeah. Supposedly you either needed like, what was it? I think a shaman uh, with like the right tool or you needed to cut its heart out and like burn it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, the other version is like the uh, the Cree mythology version. This one's more like an evil spirit that possesses people, and then they just kind of become violent and like cannibalistic. Um, it mm. tended to like people who were like greedy, gluttonous, uh, or starving were like more susceptible to it because I think it was a legend that it came out of uh, a way to push people to work together to provide for each other type stuff so i think that was a way to scare people into it um but i think there's there's been I, I was reading that there was like incidents uh in like parts of canada where people were had engaged in like cannibalism and killing those who were possessed and it was be it was blamed on windigo and you had a lot more incidents in canada than you had in like the northern u.s but here in canada we don't call it the wendigo we call it the windapogo so, <laughs> point, point, no. point, point, point. <laughs> but I know sometimes they can be like shapeshifters type thing and like take the, uh, the appearance of people. My brother has a scary Wendigo story that he heard from somebody, and I'm not going to tell it because it's so long, but they can like mimic voices and everything like that. And they, they like also like a goat sucker, they like do stuff to like deer and everything, like tear them apart and everything. So, yeah, if the, the window's scary, there's a bunch of Wendigo movies. There's the antlers, and there's another one I, I watched called The Retreat, I think it's called. And um, that's more of like the humanoid type, the Cree version of it. So, there's I've seen movies of both sides, yeah. And I guess it became so like widespread and there was so many incidents that like the psychologist actually uh, coined it, a term they would call it Wendigo psychosis. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Winnipogo psychosis. Yes, <laughs> Winnipogo, Winnipogo psychosis. You know, there is another urban legend that takes place in San Fernando Valley. <laughs> They're known for having some of the best meat. But again, you know, that's just an urban myth. <laughs> Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know. So, listeners, why don't you check yourself at Pete's Meats, <laughs> SFV.com, where you can have some of Pete's Meats, top quality. Find out for yourself. Is it a is it an urban myth or is it or is it real? You let us know. Oh, oh, it's, check it out. It's it's so real and it's <laughs> scary. Good. <laughs> Much like the Winnipogo, the more you keep eating it, the bigger you get. Yeah. <laughs> so. In Canada, they call it the Mito Pogo. <laughs> yep. there you go thank you for watching another episode of not a strong start you could like subscribe comment share on the youtube channel not a strong start you can listen to us anywhere listen to your podcast you can follow us on instagram at twitter not a strong start 
I am your host, the Boogie Dan. You can follow me at King underscore Sangre. I am not your host, the Myth, the Legend, host Dingo. You can, <laughs> host yeah. Dingo. You can find me. This is me, no break, on Instagram. <laughs> okay. uh, and I'm Bloody Marie Pogo, and you can follow me at Marie Plays at all on Instagram. You need a pogo sound. Yeah. You say, ding, ding, ding. Wink, wink, wink. I want to look it up if we made it. We must have. Did we make photo sticks? I need to investigate. Where's George? I need him to investigate something for me. <laughs> Put him on the case. <laughs> Put him on it. <laughs> <laughs>